What was it like to be an out performer um, then? <laughs> you know, um, you take a lot for granted these days. Was it difficult? Was, was it just like, like your guy? You there know? were tense moments, I remember. I remember. Do you remember the ice rink in Nottingham? <laughs> yeah, we once nearly got killed on an ice rink. We were touring with a piece called P Pornography, yes, which we started off at the ICA. So if you were in the ICA, it was absolutely fine. But then we were on tour in Nottingham and we thought, we'll go ice skating. We were all coming out. We got to the middle of the ice and thought, oh, this is funny. And then we realised we were surrounded by a lot of young straights all going, Ugh. <laughs> and it was very difficult. It's very difficult to run with ice skates, <laughs> especially when one of you is a pre op transsexual who's a minor's son and has decided to answer back. Are you here, darling? Is Ivan here? No, that's all right. So, was it, <laughs> what, what, was it a case that the personal was political from the start for you? Um, well, I learned that phrase at college. I was very lucky. I was, uh, had fantastic teachers and was surrounded by a group of radical feminists who were my friends, and they taught me that phrase. But I, yes, that was always the case. I, that, I've always thought that was self-evident. But it, I've always tried to explore that, what that actually means. I mean, how does that actually pan out? But sure, it was... I mean, I don't think any of us ever thought, I must make a statement today. But um, as it turns out, we were. I mean, I didn't, I don't think, I mean, I'm an artist and my colleagues were all artists. I don't think any of us ever thought we must address such and such an issue. That was just part and parcel of what we were doing. So what were the kinds of things that were driving you forward in your work then? Um, one never really knows. I think you, I pick, you pick up a series of obsessions which are in the air, in your own mind, in your own heart, running around something that's in the air at the time and then it crystallizes around an annex. I mean, the question for us always, and for me always, is what's the next show? I mean, that's all you ever think about. You know, okay, we've done that one, what's the next one? And then someone comes with a, an image or a story or sometimes a person or a performer, and that triggers. And then afterwards, people say, oh, I see you addre addressing the question of female empowerment, the AIDS crisis, blah, 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 whatever it was. <coughs> but I didn't, you know, when I was creating a vision of love with Robin, I don't remember us ever sitting down and saying, we need to talk about X, Y, and Z. It was just, we found this extraordinary painter who no one seems to know about. Mm -hmm. Let's make a show about him. And this picture has been destroyed. This picture was drawn on the pavement outside the Brompton Oratory and it has been destroyed by the feet of people shopping. This picture has faded. There's almost nothing left of it. You're going to have to look very closely. What is this a picture of? And so I came out of the National Gallery. I looked down, I saw him on his hands and knees on the pavement and I said, my God, my God, I never expected to see you like this. I looked down at his hat with the loose change in it, and I, well, I said to Stephen when I got home that evening, I said, listen, love, there but for the grace of, and I, well, I'm sorry, I just reached into my wallet, and, and I gave him a fiver. I'd like you all to know that this is a real fiver. Well, all right, I will give you this fiver, but you've got to promise to try and pay me back as soon as you can. I often wonder, which of us are going to end up like he did? I mean, which of us is going to be as happy as he was? On my 63rd birthday. Happy Ooh, birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <coughs> On my 63rd birthday, I won't be falling down, dying of drunkenness.
helping us in this street outside the workhouse. I'm going to throw a huge party. I should invite everybody I've ever known to this party. And of course, even at 63, I shall look completely fabulous. And even at 63, I shall still be turning out in drag. I just know I will. I shall be wearing a white floor length Balenciaga gown with an enormous train and beautiful medieval sleeves kind of that button up to the wrist, but I shall wear them unbuttoned so that they hang down the trail on the floor. They look completely stunning. I shall arrive very, very late at this party, my own party, and I shall also leave extremely early because I do think it's so tacky to stay around for too long, even at your own party, and falling over drunk late at night is just too little. And I shall be walking down the road, surrounded by flowers, a great halo of flowers all around me. In fact, I shall hardly be able to carry all the flowers. And that the lights will be cast up from, from the street, and they'll be reflected off the flowers, and all the colours will be flashing into my face, and I shall just look too ethereal for words. I shall get a minicab, because I always get minicabs at home. And when I get in the minicab, the driver will say to me, where on earth did you get all those flowers from? And I should say, well, I could say, well, it's funny you should say that to me, actually, because I'm just about to ask you to take me all the way to Wilson Jewish Cemetery. I know it's four o'clock in the morning, but I just want to take all these beautiful flowers that I've got, and I just want to lay them on the grave of a man who I've never met, but whom I greatly admire. I just want to sit there with the flowers at the dawn, watching the sun come up, and all the flowers around me, me and the graves, all on our own. Of course, they think I was completely insane if I did that. So I could say, actually, darling, they're for you. But that's ever so tacky, because it would sound like I was picking him up, and I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do that, really. And anyway, I mean, they're not for him, actually. The flowers are mine. And so that's what I'd say to him. I'd say, actually, darling, they're my flowers. Yes. I'm 63. It's my birthday. This is my dress. And these are my shoes. These are my gloves and my jewels. This is my hair, and this is my face. So why don't you just stop the cat, get in beside me, and... Well, I met him. I actually did meet Simeon Solomon. Yes, I did, my girlies, yes, I did. And I can tell you exactly when it was. It was a year ago. I'd just come back from Russia, visiting my estates. And the troika was waiting for me outside at the stage door of the Black Cat Public House Camden Town. And I was rushing down the steps. <laughs> that doesn't always work, that <laughs> joke. <laughs> That's what carry on. And I was running down the stairs, and I tripped. There were a couple of bottles of vodka in the hem of my chaparelli gown. How they got there, I have no idea. And I pushed my way through the throngs of fans waiting for me at the stage door, and Dimitri handed me up into my troika. I put the sables round me, and we were off, off into the crisp night air. The bells jingling, the horses' hooves striking up sparks on the frozen ground, the chill wind making my cheeks glow like a seventeen-year-old, seventeen-year-old. And, and as we heard him down Kentish Town High Road, NW5, there he was, pissed out of our streets with the red in the dustbin. I said, what? The Troika! We skid it to a stop. I leapt up, threw the sables on my shoulders, and with what was left of the vodka in one hand, and a very funny looking woodbine in the other, I looked at him. The wind was whipping my hair into a frenzy, and as our eyes met, I screamed out at him at the top of my fucking voice. Once in everybody's life, you get hurt. And it's nothing to be ashamed of because that's just the way life is. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel another song coming on. I feel, well, let's face it, on a night like this night, after a year like last year, in a city like this city, Ladies and gentlemen, this next song is dedicated to everybody here tonight who's ever been hurt. It's all right, darling, you don't have to lie to me. I don't even know you. Your mother hurt you. Your lover hurt you. Actually, in my case, it was my father. Look at me standing here. I'm 50-ish. I'm 
50. And it still hurts me. It hurts. It hurts so much sometimes you can hardly walk. And you know something, it isn't the heels that are killing you. And this is what Mr. Simeon Solomon had to say in 1869. This is what he said, girls. The hurt that has been done them passes by. They are made whole. For love, slowly but surely, heals them. In his arms are the broken of spirit cherished. And when he holds the hearts that are cleft to his breast. Ladies and gentlemen, this next number is dedicated most respectfully to the woman who first sang it one hot August night in 1886 Miss Mari Lloyd. Come on, girls, it's Mari time.